All right. Hello, everyone. Hi. Welcome. Welcome to Showcase Wednesdays. This is our, this is actually our penultimate Showcase Wednesdays of the year. Um, and it's being brought to you by the Cohen Acting Studio official theater channel from Studio City, California. Uh, we are so thrilled that you all made it. You know, listen, out of out of a bazillion gazillion virtual happenings, you could have clicked on tonight, you chose us and and we plan to really make it worth your while and worth your efforts. I mean, some of you may have walked over to your computer and turned it on and clicked a button. Some of you may have, you know, sat on a couch and picked up an iPhone and clicked a button. Others may have rolled over on your beds and opened your laptops and clicked a button, whatever it took. Guys, whatever you had to do to be here, you made it to the show. And and truthfully, um, and in all earnestness, we do thank you so deeply for that. So tonight we are presenting an evening of Fielding Edlow's One Acts by none other than the phenomenal Fielding Edlow. Phenomenal, that's a new pronunciation. We'll go with it. So. Um, here's the news on that. Fielding and I have had a 17-year creative relationship, and only last year we came to discover that we are actual blood-related cousins. Yes, it's true, and we're not too far removed, although Fielding is totally far out. Did you see what I did there with it? Yeah. So we're going to kibitz about that after the show, but... Um, so here's a couple of little tidbits before we begin the performance. There's no intermission. So if you can hold your bio breaks for the next about 70 minutes, you'll be golden. Uh, golden. Please note, please note for those interested in parentally guiding, this is a PG-13 PG slash maybe RXX. So you may want to, you know, you may want to put your earbuds in. Um, uh, next, we are, we're not using paper programs. We are, we are saving the planet one playbill at a time, but never fear, this is theater. So for now, we're going to be introducing the cast and the crew after the show so that you can learn a little more about those powerhouse talent machines. Oh, also, after the, um, after the fourth and final one act that you see tonight, we are going to open up the chat feature on the YouTube channel. It was open. Now it's closed. We're going to open it up again. Uh, as, uh, as, and as soon as we do that um, during the curtain call, you're, gonna be, you're welcome to throw out any specific questions uh, to our writer, to the actors, fan comments, to the cast, the crew, um, as soon as that chat box becomes chat box becomes available uh, of even greater significance. We are pairing this night, Showcase Wednesdays, with social justice charity organizations and pandemic relief funding of our writer's choice. So toward that end, although there's no charge for tonight's performance, any and all donations to the Alexandria House, the Alexandria House, are welcomed and greatly appreciated. Please note, once again, uh, for the duration of this program and through the Q&A, you out there can see us, but we, we can't see you. So any and all attire is optional. Um, let's see. Uh, I, think that's, I think that's about it. All right, guys. So we're going to, here we go lights, camera, action, and, and music. We're going to have our, our noble tech crew lead us in with a sweet jam, and I will be back in just a few seconds to introduce our first piece. Enjoy, y'all. is called Coffee. It is present day. Noel sits in a chair waiting for a 
friend in the outdoor patio section of the infamous Aroma Cafe in LA. He sprays his phone with something and wipes it down and then realizes he didn't turn it off first. Gabby walks up and just stands there looking over at him. Oh, hi. I would like to- Yeah, we- uh... Have you, did you just- Did you drop your phone? No. I just realized I haven't cleaned it ever and I wiped it down while it was on and I think I might've short circuited it. But maybe that's a good thing. I know. If one more person tells me to delete apps off my phone or drink more water, I'm gonna fucking lose it. Feels weird. We could go for a social distance stroll right now if this is too, um... Finish your sentence. Well, they haven't closed the sky. Um, but nobody's here. This is good. It's really, really good to get out. I don't think anybody's coming to take our order. So do you want to approach or I can go? So when you get Corona from the dude at the counter, you'll ultimately blame me? I, um... I, Why don't I go get the coffees? I'll get it. Or we can go together. They don't do cashier because all the man bun baristas are 21 year old conspiracy theorists who think 9-11 was an inside job. Would you like it hot or iced? I'll have a coffee with oat milk. I'd BYOS. Bring your own stevia, like Lydia on Breaking Bad? Never saw it. You know, they don't put the milk out anymore. They stopped doing that when the lockdown order went Oh, out. how about... You decide what goes in my coffee. I can try to fix it for you. Really? Really? What's your passcode? It's, um, 1968. You were born in 1968? Yep. I was a Watergate baby. My mom had me while Nixon was probably shouting at Haldeman, you better erase those tapes, you son of a bitch, because I want to be remembered for the anti-ballistic missile crisis and treaty and not for this bungled break-in because of you banana heads. Did you fix it? No, I didn't touch it. I sort of always go through Bradley's phone and I- You I go don't... through his phone? Why? Do you find things? No. No! I mean, I almost sort of want to, but- What? The only thing I found, which is sort of circumspect, was he gave his not very pretty, bulimic, boring, travel agent ex-girlfriend a Facebook cupcake for her birthday, which is sort of tone deaf. You don't give a travel agent a, or a bulimic a Facebook cupcake. You, you give her a, a... A therapist Groupon? Yeah. And I know he follows a lot of these uh, bosomy, helium ball, bouncing blonde actresses in their 20s on Instagram. And he gave one of them. I think he might have known her from New York days, but he sent her two kittens with hard eyes. <laughs> that made me feel terrible. Does Brad know you go through his phone? Yeah. He says I have a sickness. It is not a sickness. I like information. Well, thanks for not going through my phone. But I wouldn't go through your phone. You wouldn't have? No, I respect you. And I don't want to catch anything from your phone. I don't, I don't have, have it. I know I probably don't have it because I'm a positive. What? Didn't you read the blood thing? No, what's the blood thing? You didn't read the blood article in the Harvard Medical Journal. No, I'm on a news hiatus. Oh, that's amazing. Okay. I'm a positive, so it's very unlikely that I'll get it. Except it's gotten really annoying because everyone's like, can you go to Gelson's for me? Like I'm the designated driver of COVID. You're so funny. Thanks. What's your blood type? 
I actually don't know. You don't know? I should know. Call your doctor right now. No. You really ought to know your blood type. Sorry? Why am I getting all wife with you? I don't know. Why are you getting like this? Are you anxious? No, I'm really not. When we had our first coffee, it was, um... What? <laughs> Do you come from a family of lawyers? Because you have a very penetrating gaze. Policemen and teachers. Very blue color. <laughs> oh, that's not. We're kind of like opposites. What were you saying about when we had coffee or when I had coffee and you didn't really... Okay, it's, it's weird, but whenever I have anything with any man, I'm always just like really anxious and just watching myself the whole time. And I didn't do that with you at all. And then I got freaked out that I wasn't anxious. Mm, and that was nice, our little... Uh... Your wife acted strange when she came home. Did she? I didn't notice. She put orange juice in front of me. Like Lorne Michaels has a jar of jelly beans on his desk, except it's a secret test. She tested me with Tropicana. Abigail loves OJ. I haven't had orange juice since 1997. I was scared of her. I like the, um... Uh, what? I like the, uh, sparkle things in her hair. Oh, thanks. <laughs> you know, I actually went to a children's salon the day before Garcetti shut the city down. <laughs> I knew I couldn't get through I got stripper tinsel in my hair. <laughs> I like the stripper tinsel. It's, it's hot. <laughs> uh, can I just say something? Because we're probably all going to die from COVID. How's Brad doing? He's okay, I guess. I, I know. I mean, this sort of I whole... really like that short film he did about the multiracial urban farmers in Solvang. I watched it's the beginning. It's so horrible. I, I can't believe he paid for a sponsored ad on Facebook for that. No, I thought it was cool how the sad mute farmer's wife mimicked our collective senses. I could leave him for that. You interrupt a lot. I know. I interrupt because I feel like if I don't, I will disappear. Jesus, that's dark. No, no. Actually, it's more like, no. It's really, I get afraid that the other person doesn't know or will forget what they're saying and I am. Um... You have to rescue them, be their conversation ambulance. I like that. You're so deep. <laughs> I'm intense, and <clears throat> I don't know that I'm deep. You had a copy of The Prophet in your back pocket when you were for Juilliard, and it fell out of your pocket as you were leaving, and they admitted you on the spot. Did I tell Brad that story? How do you? Because, I'm sorry, go ahead, finish your sentence. How do you know that? I've listened to all your podcasts. I mean, the ones you've been invited on. I take walks and I listen to podcasts. I take walks and I paint rocks. I'm like a sad sack Dr. Seuss with hairy forearms. It, my knuckles look like Robin Williams. They look nice to me. Oh, here's your dish. Thanks. I love how it took a year. Why didn't you answer my first text about getting coffee? I did. I, I mean, I know it was the next day. I meant it as a friend, you know. This is a friend call? Coffee? What did you think? No, 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 I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I should probably get back soon. Oh, really? Uh, you know, when you first sent me that text about getting the dish back to me, I kind of freaked out. I, um, I hadn't been that excited about a boy texting a me. A boy? So if you're Watergate, I'm William Henry Harrison. Should I get us a cinnamon scone? We, we don't what were you saying? Your text was, um, like a dream. I, I, I wanted to just squash it and swallow it and eat it, to sleep with it, record it, bury it, and dig it up and stare at it under a UV light in a tiny arboretum. You're so funny. <laughs> so I'm your little coffee clown? This is the first time in I six.
This is the Fantasy Shower. We're at the Warwick Hotel in New York City. Fashionista Ariel and her older sister Tate are setting up for an impending co-ed bridal shower for Ariel and her fiance Ted. Tate's boyfriend Gerard is down the hall in the hotel bar watching football. For now, the women are alone. Mom, why did you put baby pictures of me on the table? It's a bridal shower, not a baby shower. Uh-oh, here we go. And anyway, it would have to be pictures of me and Teddy. I sent you pictures from like our first date to two weeks ago. Did you not get them? She can't hear you. She's having one of her nosebleeds. Okay, that's a great job for you. Can you keep doing that? Am I okay with picking up your baby pictures and putting them someplace else? Yes. Are you okay with that? Yeah, you know, I know I'm unemployed, but it's not like I'm flowers for Algernon. Okay, Tate. Look, I can't have an asthma attack right now. I need to take steady, even deep breaths. Fine. Breathe. I'm breathing! Why don't you put those pictures by the media station? A media station? This isn't a live podcast. This is just an event where everyone's going to leave three and a half pounds fatter and with a take-home body lotion. It's for the slideshow. Tate, I appreciate you being here. I know this will happen for you someday. You know what I like. I like the whole piano. I like all 88 keys. I like a vast cornucopia of keys at my disposal. Instead of being stuck with one totally annoying grading key that is dissonant and friendly and will eventually stop fucking me. You're only playing one key right now too. Yes, but I'm not locked into one key. I can unlock myself into another sonata or another fun scale. This is my day, okay? It's big. It's like the, the Treaty of Versailles or, or Bay of Pigs. What? Whatever, I hated history. It's like when Simon and Garfunkel threw that concert in Central Park. Oh, I don't remember. I was shrooming and watching Billy Cartman put his penis into an old cantaloupe. Where is Gerard? Why is he not helping us set up right now? He's here. Where? Where here? He's in the hotel bar thingy watching a few minutes of the Vikings game. Text him and tell him to come now. He's coming. He only watched like the first quarter in fantasy or something like that. Really weird. Why don't you change? And uh, I'll set up the DJ area. <laughs> the DJ area? Whatever. The iPod station. But somebody has to man it, and I'm hoping that Gerard will. Brady, you old woman! You're playing like Jessica Tandy! I'm gonna shove your balls down your throat, you fucking decrepit old piece of shit! And what do you mean, change? What am I changing into? Your shower outfit. This is my shower outfit! You look like a confused revolutionary. Well, sometimes it's better to die on your feet than live on your knees. Can we focus? We are making important, lasting memories right now. Do you want me remembering you quoting weird communist leaders? Or do you want me to remember how you were a wonderful helper on my special day in the- Okay, shut up. <laughs> this is what I did for music. So okay. Edith Piaf for some early morning schmoozing. And then, like, right before everyone's going to yak all over each other, some early angry you 2 and then the soundtrack for Requiem for a Dream. What? Nobody is throwing up. This isn't off campus at CBT. Why would somebody barf? 
Do you think that people would be drinking to not feel their feelings because they're so jealous of me? Oh my God. Oh my God. Let's talk about seating. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's. <gasps> oh my God. They're going to be here any minute and we're not even close to being. <sighs> we, are, we are not even close to being ready. Okay. We, we have to check and make sure that the lights are set up. We need the slideshow. We need the DJ area, the playlist, the cupcake stand, two cupcake stands. Can I just say it's a little strange that you have a kid's table sit here? Well, it's actually a geriatric table. I'm putting Ted's mother there. You know she's not well. But if she's not well, wouldn't she want to be closer to the bathroom? It's a power table. Just move her card and her companion's card here. You know, I was only trying to make things more jazzy, memorable with the music. Don't eat the cupcakes! I rushed here this morning. I didn't eat breakfast. I can't have a cupcake. Steady breaths. Steady, deep breaths. I'll starve. You look pretty. But I think you can look a little prettier. Let me try something. Oh, it feels nice. Mmm, sticky. Is it supposed to feel sticky? Sticky-ish. You look hot. Thank you. No, no, but I don't I don't want to look hot. Uh, I want to look stunning. What's your problem? You look hot. I you don't understand. You don't understand. When you get engaged, it's about being, it's not about being hot. It's about being empirically pretty, Getting but not- Getting men hard? You can't control the hardness of men's cocks. You can't Jedi mind fuck men's cocks. God. Please stop. You are just like mom. They're so weird and inappropriate and- And let's go! Yes, let's go! Go get him. That must be halftime. Go get Jerry! I'll if you do don't go it. get him soon, I'm gonna lose it! I'll do it, my God! This isn't the cast for Frozen. <laughs> Look, just go get Jerry, Gerard, or whatever, and be a good sister, okay? I can't believe you. Just be a good sister and help me. You know, you really are just like mom. I know that you weren't doing blow with her at, you know, Halston at Studio 54, and you don't exactly spend I'm time- I'm not like mom. I wasn't doing blow with Holston at Studio 54, and I spent, I don't spend my time making shitty, ugly charm bracelets and trying to sell them to teenagers on Etsy. The charm bracelets are a good, emotionally safe hobby for I don't care. You know what? You have problems. I don't Just care. Just admit it. Just I don't say care. it. I don't you. care. I don't care. Hey, guys. What's up, cuties? Two more minutes to halftime, and then I'm all yours, okay? Um, but we need you now. They're reviewing a call. Fucking Manning fumbled the ball in the end zone. This is a big fucking deal. Big deal. No problem, sweetie. And that we, we need you. We, we need you. Gerard, come back! He doesn't work for you. He's not one of your in-style interns. <laughs> Why are you so man-centered? This is my day. This is my series of moments. Would you want me to set up the media station? No. I need Gerard to do it. And I need him to do it before the first guest arrives. I'll do it, my God. <sighs> this isn't DreamWorks screening for the cast of Frozen. We're getting off track, okay? Just, just hang these lanterns. Okay, stand on the chair with two feet firmly planted. Good, that's good. I like how you're doing that. Very good. 
So did you get my email about my art show? Tate, I can't do normal day-to-day -day life things right now. I sent you an email with an attachment. The Starbucks of 58th and 1st is doing a showing of my artwork. Mm -hmm. That's great. What works are you showing? My pigeons. The pigeons. Ah, uh, the pigeons. I forgot. <sighs> well, great. I I'm really proud of you. The Starbucks on 1st half? Yeah, it's a really big, clean Starbucks. A lot of artists hang out there. <laughs> God. Never has a statement summed up our generation better than that. Do you understand that major artistic movements have been started in coffee shops? Pointillism, cubism, pastels. Look, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm really happy for you. I am. It's just... What? It's just really hard. You take the 57th Street bus, you walk three blocks, it's even got a clean and wonderful okay, lounge area. We need to hang the lanterns. We have to hang the lanterns. Have you ever thought about doing whippoorwills or doves? No, because I'm not like you. I see the world in all of its complexities and messy kaleidoscopes of darks and whites and all of its inexplorable psychological spiritual catastrophes. Are you unhappy? Yeah? So what? Do I charge into your office and give you notes on your ankle boot layouts for InStyle? Okay, I could have gotten that job at Vanity Fair, but mom decided to OD on Clonopin and paint fumes that day, so whatever. Look, we have 40 people arriving at any minute. Mom's in the bathroom having a panic attack and you're just, you're... I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm finding my way. I know, I know. I'm just a little off right now. I know. This isn't my year. I'll be better in two years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're gonna find the right key and not a lazy self-centered one who treats like shit. Manning, you old decrepit nutsack. I'm gonna shove a tie arm down your fucking throat, you old crippled son of a bitch cocksucker. I mean, was mom trying to kill herself with the pain fumes? Who cares? Hook the lantern tighter in that thing. You know, I passed your uh, portfolio along to the photo department. I know. I'm fine. Do you know how many portfolios sit on top of Kathy's desk? And I got yours pushed all the way to the top. Yeah, and then I have to get her annoying email. And why did you have to be CC'd on that email? You didn't have to be CC'd on that email. Because in the business world, we CC each other. Well, I hate people who CC themselves. It's like, oh. I have to be the sender and the receiver. I have to display my pussy and my asshole all over the <laughs> Yahoo Messenger. Oh my God, you are exhausting. Can you, can you please just go get Jerry? <sighs> you need to run the slideshow right now. He just came in to tell you that they put two minutes back on the clock. Let him speak for himself. I mean, Brady's injured. He sat down on the field like the fucking Gramps that he is. I mean, he should have stopped playing like, what, five years ago? And my main guy, Rogers, he's on a bye. So I had to play Manning and just everything is fucked. I don't understand anything that you're saying. <sighs> but <laughs> look, but you need to do a practice run of the slideshow now. And now. Now, 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 now. You understand that Manning's been hurt? This is bad. That's right, baby, it's really bad. Gerard, we have to be room ready now. I don't care about- Ari, just let him watch the last half quarter. I can do the media station. I understand media. Two, two more minutes, I promise you. Uh, by the way, I think your mother's double locked herself in the bathroom. <laughs> Wait. Oh, go go check on our mother. Oh, Bring her to conference in some Advil. This is ridiculous. 
You need to stand up to your boyfriend and stop being such a doormat. Just watch your breathing. <laughs> we don't even need him. I'll finish up everything. Why would you even be with someone who has such a horrible work ethic? Your fiance is not even here. Talk his about a horrible work ethic. His mother has a mess and he's bringing her in a wheelchair. Well, you got kind of lucky. You got this mother-in-law who's never going to be all up in your grill. <laughs> I know. Is she okay? I mean... She's in and out of the hospital a lot. God. I actually should be in a hospital right now. What are you talking about? I just, I just took myself off Celexa. You just took yourself off? You have to be under a doctor's supervision for that. I hate my doctor. He's such a know-it-all. <laughs> okay, you have to taper off. Everybody tapers. Only losers taper. Have you, have you ever experienced double vision? Really, now? You're doing this. Okay, just sit down. <sighs> and I'm very happy not being married or engaged. I can pick up and go anywhere I, I want. I, mean, I could literally get on a plane and go to Sweden and watch a puppet festival right now. <sighs> no one's calling you. I would go to your puppet festival. Okay. Now, would you please go get your criminal boyfriend? Thank you. I would want you to be there. And I'm sorry, I'll go get him. I, I just, I don't want to be the nagging girlfriend who makes homemade pasta and sets a table for three hours while her boyfriend is at the racetrack with an international escort. Is he a criminal? Gambling addict? <sighs> Wait, don't touch that! You're wheezing. <sighs> and Teddy and I had our first kiss in this elevator at the Warwick. So this is very important to us. Well, see, I never even had a first kiss. I can't have a kiss without someone without their cock coming up right up behind me in their little cock caboose. <laughs> oh my God. Oh shit, where's your inhaler? Here. Go get Jerry. What's your hair between your knees? You need to go get your lazy boyfriend, or I will tell everyone that you had sex with a 14-year-old boy in France. He said he was Quinzons. That's still 15. Can you not even count in French? <sighs> okay. Oh, all right. <clears throat> ow, ow, ow. Okay, really? A headlock? Really? Ugh. Ow. I'm sorry. What? I'm sorry, guys. Listen, screw Manning, screw Brady, screw Rogers, and screw fantasy, all right? I'm all yours. Let's go. Let's do this thing. I'm so sorry, sweetie. I need you to wipe off your beer mustache, hang the rest of these lanterns, and do a trial run of the slideshow. Of all the things Ted should be doing. Well, at this very moment, Ted is probably helping his mother out of a handicapped van. Whoa, what's wrong with Ted's mom? Multiple sclerosis. <laughs> Man, that's a rough load, man. But hey, at least it's not locked in syndrome, right? I was just watching Diving Bell and the Butterfly. I mean, talk about transcending an existential crisis with just unparalleled heroism. Mm, mm -hmm. You know, your, your hair. Oh my gosh, it is so silky. I just, I love it. It's, you know, Ted, he's got this wiry mop, but yours is just like... Mm. It's smooth, right? I've really been changing the temperature of the water. I think it makes a huge difference. Mm, mm -hmm. Does anybody care that her mother is probably hemorrhaging big chunks of... Oh, yeah, yeah. I She got a little bit of blood on her dress. I'm supposed to ask one of you to go back to her house and get some sort of Valentino thing that's hanging in the closet? We are not doing that. We are not doing anything for that woman! 
just because she is out of her mind with jealousy over me. Hey, 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 hey. This is the lantern of peace, okay? We love each other. I love my sister. I like you. Uh. You know, families are tricky. I remember when I was little, when my sister would take a shower, I would just sit on the floor of the bathtub and just kind of, you know, look up at her, just wanting to be near her. What are you talking about? That is a horrible story. Tate, move the little table away from the big table and let him do his job. Gerard, let's go. Hey, why is there a kid's table? I know. Isn't it ridiculous? It's because my soon-to-be mother-in-law can't be at the main table, all right? But she's the most important person in the room. I mean, her vagina is where your fiance came out of. Her vagina is the reason we even get to do this. Yeah, I really don't want to go into it on this sacred day. What'd I do? What'd I do? It's just not appropriate to discuss on this sacred day. Because she wears a diaper and I don't want her wafting. You know what? Well, here. Here's your slideshow. You get love, but you really need to learn to respect and love your elders. I mean, these are the most important people in our society. They are the elder statesmen, the night's watchmen, mm. the prophets. Mm. Mm, thank you, Jerry. And I have a few more tasks after that. Okay, darling? Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Well, you're this faux artsy pigeon documentarian, but you can't even ask your own boyfriend to hang a lantern. You're like this angry toddler who can't get their shovel back in the sandbox. And by the way, you cannot go off of Selexa. I have a showing at Starbucks. <laughs> I signed a contract. Guys, it's okay. Love, remember love? Let's go back to loving each other. You wrote your thesis on Katie Royce's new, new feminism, but you're a doormat. Mm -hmm. Katie would be embarrassed that you associated yourself with her. Who's Katie? She sounds hot. You're bossy? Okay. You know, and you don't ask nicely. This is why you are having you photos just gotta stop being mean to me. Because you don't stand up for yourself. You don't stand up for your own sister. And you are a pussy with men. You're a pussy with me? No. You are afraid of him. Just admit it. No. Admit it, admit it. Just admit it, you are a total pushover doormat. Maybe I am. When I ask someone to do something and they don't want to do it, it gets awkward. I feel small and stupid and I just want to die. I just want to fucking lay down and die. Well, that's intense. Why didn't you come the first time I asked you? I did come the first time. All right. I just know you're going to keep asking, so I just wait until it seems like the last time. But why isn't the first time the last time? I mean, it makes me tired and, and feel small, and this is real. This is for my sister. This is not fantasy. Are you going to remember some weird end zone thing? Are you gonna remember this is the first time you met my family? See, you do care about establishing memories. Hey, let's just help your sister, okay? Should I go downstairs and help Ted's mom? We're missing two cupcakes. Three. That one is missing an A. I'll go to Magnolia, I'll get more. Open your mouth. No. Open your mouth. No. Oh, Get away from me. No. <laughs> Gerard. What? Are you going to marry my sister? What are you doing? Uh, uh. What are you doing? Uh, mm -hmm. And would you even consider this a serious relationship? Oh, well. Yeah, what the I, fuck uh, are you doing? I mean, Do you know her middle name? Have you uh, bathed together in a soaking tub together for 20 minutes in total silence? Have you taken out a dual museum membership? Ew. No. And it's Layla. 
It's Layla. I don't talk about it because I hate it. And we haven't gone to the MoMA because I should be in the MoMA and not some guy who stands there naked letting people touch him and throw wet noodles at his neck. I'm not gonna be your maid of honor. Find another maid. Tate, Tate. And why is my boyfriend so much worse than Ted? Maybe Ted should have hosted this in his mother's massive townhouse where she could be more comfortable. Baby, as I said, we as a society really piss on our elders in terms of care, you know, respect and giving them the honor and dignity of their own process. What is wrong with you? You don't act like this. You're just trying to impress the goddess. <gasps> I was the only one who got a choice in deciding which wall my photo would hang up in the Starbucks. And you know what? That felt amazing. A choice. Tell your planner, I'll be a minus one. No, actually, I'll tell her, and then I'll CC you, and then I'll CC myself, because I'm important enough to CC. Go get mom from the bathroom and bring her here. Give her this to cover up the blood on her dress. Okay. You know, I knew her middle name started with an L. I thought it was Lillian. <laughs> I was kind of trying to impress you. You seem mean. In a good way. I think I'm just mean. My sister will probably have a nervous breakdown and never marry. But I will probably be divorced in about three years. Max. I'll be exactly like my mother. Sons, the Klonopin, and the Etsy, and a few less laugh lines. And the sad thing is, I see myself standing in line, waiting to change my name back to Cragger, texting a new flirtation, and not even that heartbroken about it. Just a little sad. Mom, to go in the middle of the table where she belongs. Hey, Ariel. <laughs> congrats on your engagement. This is the truth about Snoopy. Darren, an emotionally connected actor, snuggles with his non-actor girlfriend, Snoopy Glickman. They're stranded in a snowstorm on a layover in Denver, en route to Darren's annual family holiday gathering. They are currently watching It's a Wonderful Life on TV at the Days Inn Motel as Darren mouths the words. I'm watching. I'm watching. You're sleeping. I can't believe you. 
Get up. Come on. Come on. No, stop it. I can watch lying down. I won't go to sleep. You've never watched an entire movie with me without falling asleep. That's because you'll put in a movie at like 11 at night and make me buttery popcorn. And then my entire next day is ruined. People start movies at 10 o'clock at night. You have this thing with sleeping and like- I'm uh, not an actor. So my life is not one long fucking fiesta. I'm sorry. This is really boring and Jimmy Stewart is conceited. What? He's one of the greatest actors to literally ever live. Are you kidding God, me? God, please don't start talking to me about craft. I'll watch, okay? Just stop pausing it. You know, sometimes I forget you're 10 years younger than me and you don't understand ritual. My mother and I would watch this movie every Christmas and it was sacred. Okay, okay, just unpause it. That sounds like a very special time you had with your mother. Okay, you don't have to... Uh, look, I know you're going a little crazy, but I didn't know there was going to be a blizzard. It was some freak thing. Well, we shouldn't have booked our flights through orbits. Oh, you don't think I'm pissed? It's my sister's Christmas party tonight. It's the 23rd. It's always the 23rd. And this is the first time I'm not going to be there to sing that holiday feeling with Cormac. I thought you were going to try to sing it through iChat. I haven't got a signal yet. This sucks. And I don't want to miss it. So, uh, can't Don't. you just sing it over speaker? God, okay, it's a song. Y you don't understand. Again, we were raised by very different, like, families, completely. Just start the movie. You're so annoying. Oh my God, please stop mouthing the words. <sighs> Who puts a suicide in a Christmas movie? They need subtitles for Jews. I don't Just watch, know. just watch. He's on the bridge. He's on the bridge, just watch. What are you, what are you doing? Hey, what? I'm just... Saying hi to your penis. Hi, hi, it says back, it says hi back. Get, get out, get out of there. How have you not fucked me since we've been here? It's embarrassing. When I called my friends, they all said, well, at least it must be a total cock fest over there. Well, your friends have a lot of problems. So I'm not super worried about what no, they- No, they like to fuck and they don't always have to like connect before they do it. And I can't lie because I'm in AA. I, I, I'm very proud of your two years. Thank you. I'm proud as well. Do you want to go to Applebee's? You get you like a grilled cheese and, and some... Uh... No! Just because I'm in Denver doesn't mean I can have a fucking carb party. Can I just ask you? Have you been jerking off in the bathroom? No! When would I jerk off? Fine, fine, every just forget second. it. Just forget it, okay? Never mind. We're together every second, scavenging for food, or, or underwear, or water, or Mars bars. I just feel like you jerk off like three or four or five times a week, and you have me. Okay, Mrs. Roper. And uh, your birth control pills are in your suitcase somewhere in the Denver airport with 2,000 other stranded passengers, and I don't think a baby's going to help us right now. <gasps> oh, my God. I'd kill myself if I had to have a baby right now. Well, why can't you just jizz on my tits? No offense, but you have an A cup, sweetie, and that'd be like jizzing on your back. I know we have a rule not to bring up other people, but no. <laughs> a few different Are men have titty fucked me before and it's worked. You I... fucking smush your tits together no. and you put your dick in between them. Okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry, but can we just finish watching the movie, baby? Jesus. Wait, just wait. Let me just ask you one more thing. Um, Why were you in the bathroom so long last night? What are you talking about? You went in there 
at like 3.30 a.m. And then you were in there for like 50 minutes. I had an upset stomach. The six quesadillas from Applebee's will do that to you. I don't want to fart up the bed. Well, you don't have to leave the bed. And by the way, I've literally been woken up by your farts in the middle of the night. So I don't know why now you decide to be all Lord Fauntleroy about it. Shit. My, my, my sister hasn't accepted the, my iChat request. I don't even know if you have a signal in this place. And, and, and... Just pick up the phone. Why do you have to like ogle each other's faces? Wait, so wait. You went into the bathroom to like fart and you didn't like jerk off? No, no, I did. I, I did. I went for possible pooping. I read an Esquire, and you think I would have booked a uh, a layover in Denver if I'd known that there was going to be a monsoon? No one in my family has ever used Orbitz or Expedia. You're obsessed with my masturbating. We don't try to get deals. Yeah, okay, you you are you are you have problems, man. You're obsessed with the weirdest shit. Like I, I great. A hundred fifty dollar round trip, but we have a twenty four hour layover. I haven't jerked <laughs> off since we've been here. In Missoula. There hasn't been a moment, okay? Lake Winnipesaukee. Hi, Ted. Can you connect me to the information desk? Oh, oh, you're the information desk. <laughs> One man show, Ted. Do they have any vanilla protein powder? No, they don't have that. What? So the entire kitchen cleaned out? Well, what about a Luna bar? They don't have that either. Do you guys have like a, a protein bar or a healthy muffin? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Maybe he's lying! Shh! These are good people. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks, Ted. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll check back with you later. All right. Uh, stay warm. I will scour the earth for food for my snoops. Come over here, baby. No, ew, stop. I don't want to snuggle. Can't I blow you? No. Do you want me to eat you? No. Why can't I blow you? Because I want to watch a Charlie Brown Christmas and connect. And hopefully the internet will kick in. And maybe I should go down to the lobby. No. Leave me? God! I owe you an amend. I feel very vulnerable and unsexy without my favorite underwear. I know, baby. You're doing great. I, I think we'll get a flight out of here tomorrow. I've never been around a man this long, like every second of the day. A man? I'm not just a man. I've been your boyfriend for eight months. And I can't even get to an AA meeting without a fucking snowplow. You want to have a meeting with me? No. I don't want you to know how fucked up I am. I, I could talk about uh, some of the bad shit I did when I was in college. Like, I was, uh, oh man. Ew. Was... No, you were a pussy. I did what you did when I was like three years old. Okay, I tried. Can we just watch, Snoops? <laughs> oh, just watch the movie! You were named after the fucking dog! Just watch the movie and open your heart! You think I'm happy about my name? Do you think they would ever elect a chief of staff named Snoopy Glickman? I'm sorry. Do, do you want to spin the Drydell? It's Dreidel. Dreidel! <laughs> oh, oh my god. I'm sleeping with an anti-Semite. Oh. Do you carry a copy of Mein Kampf in your carry-on too, Darren? You're a mess. Can we just 
watch. Oh, what are you doing? You look like a confused porn star. Just get, get out. You're not hard. Why are you not getting hard? Are you a sex addict? Oh my God. I knew I shouldn't have told you I fucked two guys in one night. Okay, I don't, I, please don't, I don't need to hear that. I, I really, I, I, Do you don't. understand? I fucked people for like a sleepover. I'm not a sex addict. Yeah, I'm an alcoholic and I'm a food addict and I chew six pieces of gum at one time, but I'm not a sex addict. Hello? You, you can't masturbate to a Charlie Brown Christmas. It's not like I'm jerking off to 9-11 footage. That is literally the worst thing I've ever heard in my life. Oh, oh, I got a connection. Stop doing that. Hey, Carrie, how are you guys? I, I, I miss you too. Yeah, yeah, the entire airport's still shut down. Mm. I know, it's the hub. Oh. Go into the bathroom. Mm. Did, the, uh, did Courtney sing already without me? Oh, mm. really? oh. What? Oh, I, no, I, I think they're uh, they're vacuuming outside. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I want you to meet Snoops. Get over here. No, I need to finish first. Just stop, do it oh. later. What? Uh, what, Care? Uh, oh, hold on a sec. I, get, get, get over uh, here. Shut the, oh. No, don't aim the computer at me. I'll meet her. Just wait. I need to finish. Hold on. I'm almost done. Oh, yes. 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 Oh, yes. Oh. 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 Has everybody sung Ave Maria yet? I missed it. Can't believe I didn't get to sing it with Corm. Hi, I'm Snoopy. <laughs> yeah, Snoopy saw It's a Wonderful Life for the first time ever tonight. Care? I can't. I can't see you. Uh, you're. You're really. You're really grainy, Carrie. What are you doing? We talked. I met them. It's enough. I'm an orphan, so my siblings are very important to me. Jews don't clamor to be with each other the way your family does and stay up snarfing all over each other till three a.m. <laughs> That's because we actually like to spend time together. Unlike your family, who goes to these fancy restaurants and insults each other the whole time and then tries to get out of paying the coat check. <laughs> you were raised by Muppets. I'm off to the bathroom. Violet? Hi! It's Snoops! I'm sorry I haven't been... Oh. I didn't know you were thinking about... I guess I'll have to find another sponsor or spiritual advisor. Sorry. Oh, okay. Well, have a great... Oh, 
Hi, Ted. It's Snoopy. Do you by any chance have any NyQuil, Tylenol PM, or vanilla extract? Yeah, for baking. No, I'm not baking right now. Okay, no, I'm fine. Thanks, Ted. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. A blow dryer? You don't need to create ambient noise to block me out. I said I was sorry. This is like my 20th amend in like five minutes. It's like an amendathon. God. You're blow drying my underwear? Yes. I wanted them to be warm for you. You're so nice. My sponsor's drinking. She's like, it's the holidays. Merry Christmas. See, you can't trust anybody. Everybody fucks you in the end. Sweetie, she's just one person. We talked about God, and she just finished off an entire bottle of creme de menthe. You know, for a lot of people, the holidays are really hard, you know? I want creme de menthe. Snoops, she, she slipped. She's obviously in a lot of pain. She's not drinking at you. He's a fucking drunk Christmas cunt. I knew I should have worked with an atheist or a Jew. She must have told you something. Uh, uh, something to help keep you sober these last two years. Right? She did tell me once that you can really turn your day around if you wash your pussy twice. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, I accept you and your darkness. You don't always have to be the funniest person in the room. You just have to be nice to me. Okay, I want to, but... You know, you know what, uh, what turns me on? Oh, vulnerability. Honesty. You want honesty? I feel like I have no organs inside my body. And it's just cold air blowing around inside me, frosting over my heart. That's a turn on. I feel like the world has forgotten about me. I know. I know you haven't said it first, but I love you. I love you too. A, a lot, a, a lot, a lot. This is a bump between friends. Mia is gingerly sipping a mint iced tea while checking her iPhone in a slightly upscale restaurant in Los Angeles. Her childhood friend, Lexi, waltzes up with two Fred Siegel shopping bags. Hi! Oh my god. 
<laughs> Can you believe I'm the one who's late? <laughs> I know. It's okay. Hi, sweetie. Oh my God. You look so amazing. Look at you. You've been like, you've been yoga lottie. No, you've been running. You look seriously amazing. <laughs> you look really rested. Oh, look at you. So dewy. Rested. I like oh. your shirt. Is it dew? I like it. No, I love it. Did you just buy that shirt? I uh, Yeah, I did. Did you order? Uh, no, just water. Um, so I went shopping. You know how you said it's nice to take a day off during the week when you work on Saturday? Well, I <laughs> love that. Are you hungry? Yeah, I'm going to have soup. Ooh, are we sharing or are you flying solo? It's sort of hard to share soup. I mean, we can if you really want to. I love how we're doing lunch. We never do lunch. And honestly, I don't think I can take another hike for the rest of my life. Like, I don't think I can take w walking in and, and seeing those annoying actresses with their big bouncing racks, like like big helium balls talking about how they're like the prettiest little girl in their shitbag town in Nebraska. And how like Sonia Sotomayor is like the new shoe designer at Fred Siegel. <laughs> it's like, uh. How happy are you that you're not acting anymore? I mean, oh you're really good, but. I know I was good. I was just so tired of always being the bisexual girl with the problem. You're not really bisexual. I had a girlfriend for a month. She was just too into me. And honestly, I'm sorry, but I don't want to be sitting holding hands with a woman over like a sad bowl of soba noodles at Cafe Gratitude. You're not a lesbian. You never went down on her. So? She read me the Marquis de Sade and we participated in gentle scissoring. Ew. Do you know what you want? Um, yeah. So... I have to tell you something. <gasps> oh my God, you're getting married. No, I never want to get married. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Marriage is yeah such an obsolete, antiquated, subjugating institution. Did you know that husbands can still legally rape their wives in their sleep in some states? Yeah. And we're supposed to just be like, oh, well, who cares? Let me spend $2,200 on like a sickening seafoam Vera Wang maid of honor frock and like set you up for a lifetime of like emotional suffocation and soul murder <laughs> oh my god the, the paper you wrote for art forum got accepted no they actually rejected me months ago oh did i know that i don't think you told me that did you tell me that i'm um pregnant <laughs> shut up yeah i know it's really it really happened out of nowhere <laughs> nowhere like a small jewish penis just popped out of your crock pot well okay well obviously i, I thought you were gonna adopt like a, a chinaman in your middle to late 40s yeah i don't know did you want to order some wine or no that is gonna make me hate myself so yeah i just wanted to tell you honestly i always thought peter was such a pothead that you guys would have problems he stopped smoking about six months ago oh did he get help? No, no, he just stopped. Was he playing squash or something? I don't know. I think he just gets up 10 minutes earlier in the morning. Well. <laughs> yeah, thank <laughs> you. I'm really happy. So there's this thing on Larchmont. Oh my God, another cupcake palace? No, there's like this secret club. I'm starting to show a little. Ooh, what club? So if I see another pregnant woman walking down Larchmont, we sort of secretly nod and smile at each other. That is literally the grossest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. You're barely showing. Look at my belly. Look at me. Look at mine. I'm bigger than you and I'm carrying around a fart baby. <laughs> so anyway, I'm starting to get a little bit of morning sickness. Are you sure you don't want one of your Coronas? I'm sorry, are we fucking after lunch? Why are you trying to get me to drink? No, so I mean, someone should, because I can't anymore, along with a lot of other things. All right, okay, well, if you really want me to, I will. Oh, there's something else. You're getting an abortion. I will go with you. No, no, just, you can't say anything to anybody, even- Wait, Peter doesn't know? No, so you really can't say anything. <laughs> I don't understand. The, the cupcake losers on Larchmont know, but your boyfriend doesn't? What is going on with you? I, um, this baby happened, not with Peter.
Oh my God. Was it your art crush? Um, the one with the face of Greg Luganis and the body of Boris Yeltsin? No, he, he's, it's someone you sort of know and. <gasps> Not the deaf guy from my acting class? No, just know that this was the most unplanned, unintentional thing. Oh my God, did you fuck my brother? Oh, I bet he's good. <gasps> oh, on. What? Sean, Sean who? Sean, Sean? My Sean? Well, you're Sean from college eight years ago. I, I, uh, when did, how did you even hook up? Like, when did you even meet? And wh where was I? Like, I, I don't, <laughs> I don't understand. So it was really random. We sort of ran into each other at LAX some months back. LAX? Why LAX? I was coming back from Passover and Peter stayed behind in New York and I ran into Sean at the airport. Sean was in LA? Why was he in LA? His job says him here sometimes on business. Oh my God, my father got him that job at Bank of America. And now he like flies here and bangs you with the job my dad got him? Lex, you guys have been over for six, no, eight years. You've been dating other people. Yeah, I've been dating losers who text me things like, what's up and who don't have headboards on their beds okay they should just ask me to blow them at ikea so that they can help them pick out their piece of shit beds obviously i had to tell you oh my god what do you want my my blessing i'm not your rabbi sorry i am not your boshem told mia this is i don't know why and, and we're deciding about what to do do. Me favor, do me a favor don't say we don't say like we're deciding i have literally hundreds of handwritten messages from him in a shoebox from zara Okay, sure. Sorry. He was my boyfriend. He was the love of my life. And he, yeah, we basically just did coke together and like napped. And now like he's like falling for you. And you're gonna have like a baby together? Not to be like daughter of a therapist here, but like, don't you think that's like an incredible hostile act? Like you must have serious problems with me that you would fuck my boyfriend in a in an airport. He still cares about you. Yeah, we loved each other. It's like a little bit messed up, but we loved each other. His stepmom lived for me. And honestly, I would still be friends with her if society wasn't like against it. Lex. Alexa. I have asked you guys all to call me Alexa. Alexa, I sent you that email. You got that email. What? Well, I just wanted you to hear it from me first. We have a long history together. This is not like when you borrowed my Marc Jacobs top and return it with like a bunch of residual deodorant all over it, but also like, I'm sorry, did you get B.O. on your stomach? I didn't get B.O. on your stupid- It was my- <laughs> Memory. Now I don't even have one memory. I don't have the one memory of my one long-term relationship because you had to go fuck my ex-boyfriend at the VIP lounge at Delta. Oh my God. We didn't have something. We. He was my we. Oh my God. Are you guys like officially together now? Well, I mean, I'm having his baby, Alexa. Oh, did it ever occur to you that like, that like he's only falling for you because he's not over me? And maybe this is like a way to get to me. That's really psycho. Maybe now is a good time for you to go back to therapy. Okay. You know, maybe you this psycho I say a prophetic or, or like exactly on point. Really I don't need a corona to say the truth session. of the moment. Do you really think now is the time to school me on my issues? Six years, Alexi. Yeah, well, I would rather choose to be alone for six years than in some security blanket relationship with some pothead writer. Are you gonna do your not speaking to me thing now? Don't ever tell me to drink for your comfort level again.
Okay, guys, fabulous. We are curtain calling actors. Show your faces. Okay, come on down. Fantastic. This is it, guys. This is theater. We take curtain calls. We do all of it. Fabulous. Fantastic, you guys. Wow, wow. I learned a lot. The do's and the don'ts of, uh, of love relationships. So, guys, we're going to do a quick... I'd love to introduce the cast. You guys can just wave when I say your name. And by the way, um, for those watching, we are going to enable a... Um, a chat feature in the uh, in the YouTube, so that in a, in just a moment when we have a little Q and A with our playwright, um, you can uh, you can join in on that. Oh, maybe I'll here. Hey, I'll come on. Hello. So that chat will be up and running. You can start to think about questions you might have. I have some questions, although I actually I learned a lot. So Sean Fay, where are you? Sean Fay uh, was in Coffee. Some of his pre-pandemic credits include Johnny and Night of the Living Dead, Catherine in the Taming of the Shrew, The Ultimate Christmas Show, Abridged, and some other favorite roles said uh, a Crumpet in the Santa Land Diaries, Warwick in Henry VI Trilogy. And he is also um, with the Porters of Hell's Gate group and an associate member of Sacred Fools. His wife, his bride, guys, it's okay that they're touching because they're married. Okay, in real life, see? It worked out, I guess things worked out after that date. Um, Kate Faye, Kate is Gabby, um, played Gabby. She was in Cinderella and Into the Woods, Laney in Two Rooms, Skylar in Breaking Bad, has appeared in the film My Name is Maisha, which was a festival circuit hit. And uh, she's a resident artist with the Porters of Hell's Gate and a fiction writer herself as well. And she's married to her co-star. We call that in this business showmance. Okay, great, guys. Valerie, come up, come up, give it away. Valerie, who played Ariel, um, is from Rhode Island. She can be seen as a beatneck hippie in Driver X and, um, and starring Estella, who's a young mom trying to figure it all out in 25-ish. I actually had the pleasure of working with Valerie. I directed her in a show about 10 years ago. What, was she eight years old? No, but she played in William Saroyan's Hello Out There and was absolutely marvelous. And she wants you all to know, Valerie would like you to know that she performs fairly adequate bird impressions. Very good. Mal, uh, we're going to Mary Albertoli, who played Tate. Mary's a thriving artist. She attended the Academy for Dramatic Arts in New York. Um, and I have the pleasure of working with her now at the studio. And she also performed at the Lee Strasberg Theater back in 04. Um, and is also, this is big time, she's the creator and executive producer of The Shift, which is a multi-digital platform series for teens and young adults to speak openly and honestly about their daily mental health struggles. Thank you, Mary, for um, for forging ahead um, in that endeavor. And then Brendan Wagner, Quinones, wave hi, is from Ohio and New Jersey, was in LA. He's back in New Jersey. Um, and after working in the corporate world uh, in New York City, Brendan got the urge to branch out and immerse himself in the performing arts. So Brendan has broken free. He's been studying with me at the studio and uh, he's knocking it out of the park in the role of Carter right now in a Neil Butte play called Fat Pig. What a title. Uh, great. Jeff Torres, who played Darren over the years. Jeff has been seen on all your favorite television shows. Jeff has been on, oh, Criminal Minds, Beyond Borders, FBI, Telenova, Pitch, Days of Our Lives, The, the Hungover Games. I love that. Strawberry Summer and Hallmark. He's done theater, uh, Angel City Improv, Love's Labor's Lost, Shakespeare, All in the Timing, and more. Um, and Jeff uh, just completed um, a directorial and writing debut in the, in the short film Once, which he created. It's fantabulous. I've seen it, and that can be seen on YouTube and Instagram and all the places where you can see things. Uh, Caroline Quigley, give away who played Snoopy. Caroline recently earned her acting BFA from the School of Theater at Boston University, and she now lives in Los Angeles and continues to uh, pursue acting and film and theater and TV, and she's doing it. Most recent credits include Lila in Steve Fife's production of Blue Kiss. She played Desdemona in Othello and Laura in The Glass Menagerie. And she'll be starring in Yuval Shrem's rom-com feature, In the Mood, at the end of this year. Guys, I'm reading you the playbill. Patricia Isas, who played Mia, trained at Playhouse West, earned a BA in history from UCLA. Uh, she's directed and adapted many children's shows at Fancy Feet Dance Studio, including Newsies and Matilda and the 
Lion King, our favorite, and has acted professionally in many, many commercials and in Spanish language voiceovers. Some of her favorite plays to act in as of late have been in uh, Doubt by John Patrick Shanley and Burn This by Lanford Wilson. Julie Cohn, who played Lexi and Alexa, is an LA-based actress who trained at David Mamet's Atlantic Acting Conservatory in New York City. And in addition to acting, Julie is also a writer whose work has been published in The Daily, in Oprah.com, in the International Herald Tribune, and a little-known newspaper called The New York Times. Fabulous, Eric Gustavo. Wave, give a wave, come on. Our technical director, an actor and technical director. The glue behind the entire production is an actor, uh, began a career in entertainment as a stagehand at Universal Studios, and later went on to work backstage at shows ranging from Cirque du Soleil, our favorite, to the Academy. Academy Awards. You've heard of those. Additionally, he has designed sets for various projects that include The Voice, my favorite, E3, Convention, and Disney theme parts. Fabulous. Thank you so much, Eric. Shout out also to Brendan, who is also our stage manager, in addition to acting in this production, as well as to the production team for Showcase Wednesdays, some of who are behind the scenes tonight, Sahaja Douglas and Jenna M and uh, and Julie Cohn and Eric and uh, and Brendan uh, for being part of this amazing, uh, this amazing sort of the tie that binds it all together, as well as, guys, we had Stephanie Castillo, Castillo come on as our intimacy director. We had an intimacy director in this live theater action play event tonight, um, and that was exciting. And now, drum roll, please. Eric, do we have a sound effect? I don't think we have a sound effect. Is it too late to put in a sound cue? Uh, we'd like to bring on our playwright for the night, Fielding Edlow. Guys, Fielding Edlow is a writer. She's an actor. She's a stand-up comedian. She's based in Los Angeles, and this is a true story. She was literally recently named one of the six funniest women in LA right now. Uh, she, uh, she, uh, her half hour special, Can't Say Slut, is right now streaming on Amazon. She voiced the character of Roxy on BoJack Horseman. She hosts her own hit monthly show, Eat, Pray, F-U-C-K, at the Hollywood Improv. I have fallen on the floor numerous times watching her show. Um, and her plays have been seen at Naked Angels, New York Stage and Film, Circle X, New York and LA Fringe Festival, and Comedy Central Stages. Her award-winning solo show, Coke Free Jap, was performed, I love it, in the New York City Fringe Festival and then had a sold out run in LA at the McCadden Theater. Um, and it was developed into a pilot at Showtime. So deal with that. Her full length play, ICU, premiered at Circle X. It was nominated for an Ovation Award for Best Writing. Um, and her play, Admissions, was a semi a finalist in the O'Neill Conference. Very prestigious. Um, her one acts have been finalists in the play contest at the Actors Theater of Louisville. Mega uber prestigious. Her short film, DVR, pre premiered in the Palm Springs Film Festival, one of the biggest in the world, and won Best Comedy in the NYC Short Film Festival. And she is the creator and the star of the acclaimed web series, Bitter Homes and Gardens. She is a native New Yorker. All right, guys, I'm gonna open up the chat. We're gonna see if there's any questions. Start, feel free to filter those in. Um, uh, questions, accolades, revelations, illuminations, anything that you may or may not have learned, you know, forewarned is forearmed, as they say. Um, but please feel free to come on and ask a question. I don't see anything streaming. Well, we could also open it up. Actors, you can take yourselves off mute. You can ask each other some questions or fielding if you would like to share a little bit about um, these 1X and how this night came together in the first place. And just thank you for the joy and the creativity that you brought to us that we could then share with you all tonight. This was uh, this was uh, a blast. I was, I was L -O -L -O -L. I was LOL <laughs> the whole time. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Um, you guys did it an um, um, just unbelievable job. <laughs> Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. Oh, um, my God. Standing O for you guys. Like, I was like howling. I wish you could hear laughter. You guys all just knocked it out of the park. So, oh my God. Like, I didn't feel like I was on a Zoom. You guys were unbelievable. So, thank you. That was like, incredible incredible to just sit and be in like so specific and nuanced like blown away totally blown away thank you that was a lot of work i'm sure but it didn't seem like work when you were watching it so it was really amazing 
Thanks, Fielding. Thank you for, um, we love these ideas. I mean, are these just things that you, let's see, are we getting any chats? I don't see anything. If you guys oh, have any chats, feel free to field. Feel free to, you guys, see if there's anything available. Is our chat working? It might not be. The, chat, the chat's working. People are uh, giving us their uh What their are they saying? You might, have to refresh, you might have to refresh the browser. Guys, I might have to refresh. I'm refreshing. Refresh. What are some of the questions? There's a 20 second lag. Okay, so Eric, if you can see, let's see. What are the audience? What do they want to know? What do they want to know? They are telling us how great it was. <laughs> well, what else? Let's see. <laughs> what is happening on our chat? Guys, listen, you can always, we're going to turn on the, um, we'll turn on eventually our, our channel where you can leave comments. But um, if we can't, if we can't hear from you here, we'll just assume that you are, you know, you're just the entertainment and the joy and the fun of tonight has stunned you into a group silence. And, um, and really, we just thank you for lending your, your internet bandwidth and your time and your ears and your listening. This was so much fun. If, you can, if there are things that you can see, Eric, feel free to shout them out or if anyone on your end can see the chat. Go ahead. We have a question from Dave Rock who asked, did the actors rehearse in person? The only, very good question, Dave Rock, question. wonderful director. Um, the only actors that were, I believe, unless they were doing it behind my back, uh, that rehearsed in person were Sean and Kate, the married couple, who played the unmarried couple very beautifully and convincingly in Coffee. So I, I would assume, I think, unless you guys were getting together, no, I don't think they were. No, this was all happening. We we sort of had to figure out a way to have a theater production, design it and do everything and light it and have tech rehearsals and make sure, you know, people had the costumes and we sort of did it all on, on Zoom, um, preparing, going to head. Jeff Torres has to head to another reading. He's the busiest man in showbiz. He wants to say goodbye. And thank you, Jeff Torres. Beautiful job. Have a blast at your next gig. <laughs> do you see any other questions, uh, Eric, that I'm not seeing? Because I'm not seeing any. Yes. Yeah. A question from Sahaja. How does Robin approach the directing? Ooh, um, uh, uh, you know, base. I, I take the actor's lead, really. Um, there, you know, actors sort of need. We're finding what we need in this new medium and, you know, how we can connect and make it real and organic and authentic. And so, um, how, you know, so I take it sort of from the actors, you know, how do we do that, you know, and we're figuring that out in this frame and this medium and how to, you know, create theater um, uh, uh, in a virtual space where we're not, you know, breathing the same air with one another. Um, so we, I, I stay very curious about it myself, Sahaja, and I, we, we all sort of keep asking questions and, and hope to give answers that will give rise to what ultimately lands for you guys in the audience like a live theater experience that's what we're heading heading towards so yes yeah and i guess the main difference Sahaja, is that uh you know for the past almost year I i'm directing sitting down which is very unusual to do <laughs> i would say that's the biggest most unusual part of the whole process <laughs> yeah great question anyone else anyone else before we say good night Brian asked, can we hear the bird impression? I love birds. Uh, Valerie, there's yeah. been a special request. So uh, yeah. that's Wait more of a joke on the resume, but yeah, it's a. Uh... Wow. <laughs> I mean, yeah. uh, that's the end. That's the end of the internet. Me. Yeah. There's nothing else. There's nothing else. There I stand amazed. <laughs> Valerie. Who knew? <laughs> what else? What else we got? Someone cast me. It's it's a very usable skill. Yeah. <laughs> Talking. That was amazing. What else? What else? Let's see. Aiden asked, how did you negotiate the challenge of not being together to work off of each other? That's a good question too. You know, that's technique and approach. These the um a lot of the well, all the performers in this show are students or in, in various classes and you know, um, the classes oftentimes are really geared toward what it looks like to live something out truthfully under an imagined circumstance. 
no matter what medium you're in, whether that's your, you know, TV, film, Zoom, if you can call Zoom a medium now, um, or on stage, it's all toward um, technique that lends itself to actors showing up truthfully, organically, authentically in the moment and in the now of nows. Um, so did that answer a question? <laughs> That's how we work together on Zoom as well in terms of yeah. you know, the exercises that we do and, and we're doing them in classes all the time and the, and the exercises that we do in classes um, that translate to the kind of work you saw tonight really are rooted in, you know, how do we make this real and visceral and alive? I think at the end of the day, that's all audiences are really looking for. You know, was it alive? I thought tonight was very alive, highly titillating. Great. Anything else, Eric? Yes. Kelly asked, is there a theme of addiction between the stories? Ooh, Fielding, I'll let you feel that. Um, yeah, if that... Um, can you guys hear me? Okay. Yeah. I don't know why I'm so paranoid about being heard. Um, yeah, I certainly, certainly in Snoopy, you know, sobriety was a sort of unpacked, if you will. But I think as a, the thing, I'm always interested in, I like, guess, themes of avoidance is how protagonists are avoiding themselves or other people in the sort of myriad or constellation of ways in which they try to just evade and avoid and just sort of stay you know not face something but certainly yeah i think addiction yeah it seemed like a, it, it it you know unfolded that way on some level sure speaking of evasion you had the most brilliant t-shirt on i think you, i saw a picture of it what did your t-shirt say fielding was wearing a t-shirt a picture oh. of his and it said what did it say fielding? even after the virus is over i still want someone of you to stay away from me <laughs> <laughs> and then more so many people texting me they go first of all i need that and also most most people or all people. yeah still like, after the pandemic stay back yeah stay away from me well, i think i kind of i had a i had a hug recently which probably wasn't safe someone hugged me and i was like fuck it i was like you know what <laughs> A nice hug i was like wow. i'm not whatever it, it yeah. happened it feels like someone i i sneezed in the grocery store the other day and i thought someone was going to make a citizen's arrest i yeah. thought it could be a thing yeah we instituted are, citizens arrest. Do. they went out in the 1860s anyway any other questions eric yes i have a, a a nice one here as a writer i'm curious these feel like incredibly specific honest scenes how does fielding allow herself to be that honest and how does she navigate relationships in her lives when they may see themselves in her work? Oh, wow, oh. great question. Um, well, first of all, I think my husband is watching this and he's just, I married one of my, I think my husband's best quality is that he's just like, you know, he respects the process and what people create. I mean, but, you know, I think I was lucky in that the very first writing exercise I ever did was I was at Neighborhood Playhouse I think it was my second year or, and the teacher said, just write a truthful monologue. Like, I don't just, it has to be true. And just, and I just, that was my introduction. And I remember I was, I was getting sober at the time. And I remember I just like vomited 20 monologues and I'm, they were all terrible. I'm sure, but you know, one was okay, but I felt like that's what people responded to at the very first was that you're honest and you're raw. And I, and I had a lot to learn. I still have a lot to learn, but like that meant so much to me because I, also, it informs my own life, how I want to be not have such a mask in my real life. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I think it's the only way I know how to write. Again, like I, there's other stuff I struggle with, but it's like I always like studied with a lot of people um, like Irene Fornes or Brooke Berman or different playwrights in New York who are like just you have to always feel like you're naked on the page and take the risk. And for me, and it's like, well, why am I bothering? Like you ask people to show up. I mean, not anymore, park, leave a house, get a babysitter. For what? You know, you, you I have to take a risk to entertain people. Love that. Thank you for that courage. It's inspiring and a, a guiding light and for, for for us here, us actors. And you really led the way. In us. And you guys, and you guys, everyone here inhabited everything, had such specificity and vulnerability. Like it was, I mean, everyone made it so fresh and so interesting and so specific. Like I was like, oh my God, I don't remember that. And Robin's sensation of a director you're the captain <laughs> captain think, my captain my cousin my cousin my captain <laughs> like you just you give all of us uh an excuse to just really unleash which i think people need particularly in this moment in time and history and space and place so thank you for letting us 
unleash ourselves and our <laughs> fullest self-expression in the hands of your tremendous writing. Mm. Any other questions? What else is, what else do they want to know? The crowd yeah. wants to know. Yeah. Question from Grant. Were the majority of these one acts devised or even reworked over quarantine? And did you rework any for the Zoom formatting? By the way, Grant was our last writer for our premiere Showcase Wednesdays, which many of you uh, attended, uh, Mona Moore Marlin. Grant is our writer and an actor who um, our flagship production was of Grant. So Grant is also a writer, asking a writer. Take it away, Fielding. Yeah. I, there, I, lo I love it when actors are like, oh, like I was definitely asked a couple things about um, like this was before email, for example, and, I, and that sounded like we were like in the late 80s. <laughs> I was like, Jesus Christ. Um, so a few things got reworked and, and certainly I attended a rehearsal. Um, so it was really useful, but I think, I hope I'm answering your question. Yeah, I mean, it, I think that it wasn't, I didn't do a lot. Coffee was the new was the new one that I wrote during this quarantine. I, all the others have been worked up to produce, but that was fun for me um, because I, they knocked it out of the park and I just, it was like, I don't know, are people having affairs during COVID? <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a good question. That's a good question for our audience. Um, we have a question from Cole Kerrigan. How did Snoopy prepare for her role? The world wants to know. Take it away, Snoops. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I I prepared by reading this play so many times and just uncovering what the words that Fielding gave us and just really getting behind what I'm fighting for in the play and um and my boyfriend's laughing he asked the question he can hear me um, <laughs> um yeah I think that's what the question meant the other things you know just um no but yeah, so that's really how I uh, prepared for my role as Snoopy and just working off Jeff. I had the most amazing partner. Um, we had so much fun rehearsing every day for this. Um, so yeah, that's that's how I prepared for Snoopy. That's the work. That's the work. And uh, let's see. Any other questions? Eric, are you seeing any? Yeah, I have another question here. Um, this is a question for Fielding about the rhythm and what appears to be clear emphasis on certain words versus others uh -huh. does she say the lines out loud is she a musician in real life i'm i'm i played piano when i was little but that that's such a great question um yes there's i, I appreciate that question there's i've been told there's a musicality in my work and um I sometimes say it out loud. I, I, I hear, I really hear it. Like I really try to just serve the characters. Most of these, I would say almost everything I've ever written full length when I, I have always heard in a writer's group because that's where I know of a joke. Um, I'm very wordy. Is this overwritten? You know, so I think that's really where it gets, it like, you know, gets midwived or cracked out of the shell. But yeah, I'm, I'm always hearing it because I was a performer first. Um, yeah, thank you. Blended. Guys, I'm just now accessing the chat. Um, we've got, we've got cold. I love you, Caroline. We've got, you've got fans from all over the world in the chat. We've got some bravos. We've got some thanks, Julia, for your the great job. Sahaja, thanks. This live stream looked great. David R said, brilliant work. Thank you, David. Thank you for coming to the show. Uh, John Aharoni said, so good with 19 O's. And uh, Ju um, Julia, you wanted to know how long did it take to pull this together? That's a good question, Julia. How long did it take to pull? Well, the idea, I think, Fielding, I gave you a a wild call out of the blue about two months ago, probably at this point. And at that juncture, Fielding um, offered some one acts and, and then started um, writing a new one. And um, it just was a sort of creative excitement, explosive moment where we said, let's do this. And I had we'd established Showcase Wednesdays and there was a place to do it. Um, so it was about two months ago that it began. And then we had several rehearsals together um, rehearsals that were set aside just for rehearsing Fielding's plays, but also um, 
in class. So everyone in this particular performance, um, they're, they're students in various classes and we were able to um, really get gritty with the material and, and dig in and bring out the big shovels to really um, excavate what we could in the time that we had over the weeks in classes, as well as having formalized rehearsals like this. So it was a sort of a mashup of rehearsing in class, rehearsing out of class, and then, uh, and here we are tonight. Um, I hope that answers your question. Were there any new evolutions that we talked about that? Uh, oh, were there any new evolutions or takeaways from connecting through Zoom? in this specific amazing experience that you would transfer to live stage. You know, we had to talk about this yesterday in a, in a class that, and even tonight before the show, I think, I think it reiterates what we have to do on stage, which is, you know, when you're in a theater, uh, especially a bigger house, you gotta, you gotta talk to the back row. Well, I guess when you're on Zoom, you gotta reach 2000 miles away if your viewer is in, you know, another country. So, I think a lot of the same things actually apply in terms of really connecting with who you're talking to. I think it reiterates what we want to always be doing on stage in a live theater atmosphere. I think Zoom actually reiterates a lot of that. And um, and many of the things that you would apply or take on technically on stage um, absolutely translate to this medium. At the end of the day, you know, is it happening between you and your partner? Did it come across? Did you land the idea? All the same things that, you know, you would do um, uh, on stage in a, in a live stage play? That's a good question. Yeah. Does it translate? Fielding, what is the risk that you think you took? Nancy wants to know, Fielding, what was the risk you think you took? <laughs> Ooh. Um, probably in coffee. I mean, I would probably, probably in coffee, you know, I feel like, you know, I, as a writer, I, you know, you, you kind of excavate the fantasy and the little dark nooks and crannies. So yeah, I, I actually remember being like, oh, my husband doesn't need to see this knife. <laughs> but um, that felt like a bit of a risk. Um, but again, it's like, I'm not doing that. And there was a lot of, you know, a lot of imaginative stuff, but I felt like that, that did feel risky. Um, I think for me, like, I think all the actors then took it off, like take it from me and they, they flew away and took these like, I mean, it just was so, I mean, the actors took all the risks tonight, you know, and it was really engaging and, 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 and it felt like I was on, you know, I, I was on the edge of my seat being like, oh my God, <laughs> it, that like what Robin was just talking about too, of that, like landing something and then waiting, but then you have like the zoom thing, but I think you guys, you know, were are so present that it was so exciting. It's such a joy and we thank you Fielding for the opportunity to walk the tightrope and that really and this does in a sense feel like what live theater is meant to feel like for actors it because of the way you write and what you write and what you're willing to express and risk we get to express and risk and take big choices and and follow your lead in that and that it's such a it's up it's such a privilege what that you know, affords as an opportunity for the artist and the instrument and to explore, you know, even in this time when we're kind of contained to really explore um, past uh, the sort of the general box that we're in um, on these screens. So, oh, someone wants to know um, is, can you work the birds, Valerie? for a radio drama? I think that's a yes or no answer. Are you willing to work the birds in a radio drama? Uh, yeah. And then uh, John Aharoni feels that he is the male Snoopy. Great, fabulous, people are relating. I just, the news is people are relating to these characters and they want more. Um, and the evolutions were cold. amazing. We're getting the news that it was amazing. And uh, I think that's, I think asked an answer. Did we, did, guys, did we do it? If there's anything else, feel free to put it in. Uh, Asim, thank you for being here. He said an amazing job. And Brian, lots of claps. Skip, Skip, thanks for coming. We're trying to get you into a showcase Wednesdays. Thank you, Skip. Great job to everyone, said Skip. And Cooper said, great job. And Alejandro, great job. Patty, oh yes, yes, Alejandro, um, uh, he, he loves you um and uh and and bill thanks us for creating this thank you um and uh Haley loves you soulmate i think that's i don't know who the soulmate is guys thank you so much if there's are there any other questions uh or yeah eric i, I, I saw one more question and it was for all the actors um how are they adapting to real life acting to online zoom and does it feel the same 
I'll let you actors answer that. For myself, acting, it, it, it's the, the biggest difference is um, literally not standing up as much, um, not moving around in the, in the physical space, and maybe perhaps in acting on Zoom, not, not having as much physical opportunity or bandwidth um, as you would. But uh, that's probably the, the biggest difference that we're more stationary, although it doesn't, but the energy of Zoom need not be stationary or static in any way. I, I don't think, I don't think. Um, what about you guys? Are, what are you finding the biggest differences are? Uh, for me, I would say it's like the, the, the difference between seeing your friend and Zooming with your friend. Like you still can connect and there's still, you can still get the same butterflies and there's a lot of emotional, I mean, it's, you can still work off of each other, but it, the way, easiest way to explain is just what's missing than when you're, when there's, I don't know, something electric in the space between you and real life doesn't happen on Zoom. So I miss that part, but uh, I still think a, little, a lot of, a lot of crazy stuff can come out on Zoom, just like <laughs> their friends and family. <laughs> I would agree with Robin that like, one of the big things too is is just like the not being on your feet like you realize that you know like we could all be wearing underpants right now and no one would know but it's you're not moving around you're i mean unless you're sean and kate who maybe are wearing underpants but they're also moving around more like in the scene they have a wider frame um that's a big thing i guess but once i'm so grateful that i stayed in in classes with Robin during this time because getting used to this format and getting used to sending ideas this way, soon it becomes, it becomes like nothing. It becomes like really talking to someone, really trying to reach them. And that is incredibly surprising. I did not expect that at all. Yeah, but you can still engage in that need to really get your partner to yeah. understand, get your partner to get it. And that you can really still engage in that way. And frankly, you know, it's kind of wonderful. We do, for the most part, all of us used to anyway, we were in Hollywood, which is the land of TV and film. And so in a sense, you know, the theater school was put online and suddenly we're in the medium de jour that most of y'all are auditioning for. So there's been kind of a neat, not, I, you know, I'm not necessarily teaching on camera classes, but I'm teaching on camera classes in a sense, just by default, because this is the frame, this is the space. How do we use it? How do we work it? You know, and how do we how do we make it work? So um, it's been, you know, when the when the when the when the gates are open and we're all you know out there and production is up and running, I, I think that you know what we've been able to accomplish in class will absolutely translate to exactly what you were saying, Valerie. Just a comfortability of. How do you work the camera and make it work in this medium, which is primarily the medium of the left coast? So, um, so that was a real benefit, actually, of of going into these frames during this time. Which, um, you know, we we've learned we've learned something about this medium that we might not have had an opportunity to if we were still at the Victory Theater Center, you know, in Burbank live. So, I'm thrilled for that. I'm thrilled for that. Anything else, you guys, about? Life, Zoom, theater, arts. Oh my gosh, I have to feed my pet. What's going on? <laughs> Go ahead, Kate. Because I mean, we've done like the Zoom plays where we each have to kind of like stare at some point where it looks like we're making eye contact with our partner. Yeah. But for this, I think I commented on Monday night on our tech rehearsal. It felt a lot in our living room. Just, oh, we're putting up an indie short, an indie short film yeah. in our living room. Yeah. And we just. We have our director, but it's up to us to make sure the framing and the lighting is good. And then, and then, you know, Eric and 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 yeah, and Brendan helped us a great deal with that. I think we would have been yeah. pretty lost without that assistance and that guidance. But um, but yeah, it's if you could see our living room right now, I think, or if you could see it when we were doing the scene, it was like just a bunch of lights and wires <laughs> and just trying to step over things. And yeah. because I'm on the side, I think uh, Robin had to kind of I had to kind of do a squat in a tight leather skirt and sort of like walk <laughs> on like that. So like my head wouldn't be out of frame. So a lot of just fun adjustments like that. And I don't yeah. do a lot of film work. So it's like, oh yeah, that's right. When you do film, these are things that happen. So, yeah. And yeah. now you've turned your domicile into a production house. You're now a studio. You're now a studio, you guys. So you got that accomplished during a pandemic. Fabulous. Um, I, I would say the only thing that I really need is a, um, uh, the audience reaction in the moment. Um, yeah. and, but you know what, like, it's been really great, like mastering, like, you know, just kind of making a connection through the camera. And I think that there are still a lot of possibilities to be mined 
out of this experience by just, you know, suddenly tweaking and moving around. And, you know, there, there, there are a wealth of possibilities open, but uh, the immediacy of, you know, hearing the audience, you know, react to what you're doing, a little scary doing it in the, in the void. Mm -hmm. well hard to gauge if it's working yeah um, especially well, and i've talked about that you know i'm laughing like a hyena like some wild animal and it's it is a strange thing that normally in live theater you would of course be interacting you know the audience is your last partner in the equation that's the last piece of the equation it sort of teaches you what your play is and the timing of your play but but you guys were able to make it work amazingly well instinctually i mean what was what's nice about Zoom is that I'm able to we're able to laugh and, you know, and and enjoy. Um, and you guys are such good actors that your instincts, I mean, you're, you're creating the timing, which is, you know, it feels like, you know, it feels like live theater. I mean, it feels like, you know, I was laughing throughout everyone. Yeah. Yes, Patty. Yes, yes, yes. Um, we wanted to like at some point we had talked about leaving the sort of audio on so that we could hear the audience but then you know if we had had all the laughter that was happening throughout the course of the show we would have been here all night so in a sense in a way um we kept everyone's uh, audio off so that we wouldn't have to pause and lengthen the show another two hours <laughs> so um yeah that's a great question um Anyone else on that? Anyone else on that? We've got a fantastic by Jason Rue, actor, and Ricky, fantastic. Ricky says, fantastic job to the actors and the producers and the directors. And Sahaja's husband said, this was so much fun. Thank you. <laughs> so great. And thanks, Peter, for showing up. And all of you guys for showing up. I'm seeing now in the chat, which is coming in on a delay. Um, any other questions before we complete the night? Um, I don't want to go. I would have a, a, a slumber party with all of you, but it would be inappropriate. Uh, so just thank you. Just thank you, everyone. Thank you, Fielding, for this gift. Um, you've brought so much joy. Really, thank you. you. You have no idea the laughter that we have that has gone down, you know, individually with couples and as groups, the amount of laughter and just creative joy that has been unleashed in the hands of your tremendous writing has been such a gift and uh, we'll never forget it. And please bring us back your next play and your next one and your next and your next. Um, Cause there's nothing that's gonna be more fun than this um, at the moment or ever. So thank you all for joining us. It was such a joy to be with you. I'm gonna give you my weird, virtual hug <laughs> on my computer i can't not do it i can't <laughs> do it. i hug my computer it was awesome to be with you we're going to end our meeting this will be streamed live and guys our final showcase wednesday of the year is happening december 16th wednesday december 16th and the wonderful rob nelson um where we're going to do his play sweet peas mama so announcements will be coming out about that um this what you saw tonight will be available for you guys to relive and see and laugh your hearts out over for the next ad infinitum because this will now sort of be on the theater channel so if you want to look at it again or review some parts or you know <laughs> uh see what's what in case you missed anything the first time you're welcome to come back to the channel and view this um and then hopefully we'll see you again in december and uh have a fantastic night and Much thank you love. robin cohen for all the work and for all oh. the directing and for putting this all together Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Robin Thank you. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Thank you. It's my pleasure and my joy. I don't know how to end the meeting, so I'm just <laughs> going to stand here like this, and then maybe Eric will do something about it. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>